Let's rock and roll, boys. Hello and welcome to another Nintendo podcast. I am Austin Cummings and I am joined by Jordan Weiner. Hey there. Danny Tortelli. Hey everyone. And Matthew Schultz. I'm here. And I was last in that in that line of names. This is great. I love it. It's new. I'm just really shaking it up. Yeah. And 2020 is the year of big change. Fun <laughs> joke. Anyway, how's everyone holding up? Fine? <laughs> We're here. <laughs> Okay, let's talk a bit about the Super Mario Brothers 35th anniversary as announced by Nintendo just last week. So uh, if you guys remember back way, 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 way back to our very timely discussion as to what, you know, <laughs> Nintendo's fall looking a little quiet is a little looking a little quiet. And we were talking about, you know, what might Nintendo do based on the rumors. And then a lot of those came to fruition when Nintendo made their big announcements just recently. Jordan, do you want to hit us with a little bit of information? Literally minutes after we press submit. <laughs> Doesn't matter the yes, time. <laughs> it's, it's as though Nintendo listened specifically to your last podcast and they thought, okay, we gotta, mm-hmm. we gotta oh, answer they are their the viewers here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're the one viewer. It's it's just yes. Nintendo. I will say, okay. actually, hey, quick, quick aside, that's the big advantage. You know, we keep our viewership down to just a slim margin, you know? We got maybe us, we got my mother, King D, my my friend Tayson, who's a at this point an extremely dedicated fan, and we love him for it and yes, other reasons. He's a great person. But the uh, but what I like about keeping it down to just this VIP level, you know, is this way when you send it out and people are like, "Oh, you do a podcast," and you're like, "Yeah, it's called Another Nintendo Podcast," and they'll be like, "Oh, that's fun. Send me the link." And you send it. It's like we can clearly gauge whether or not that singular person <laughs> chose to listen. <laughs> yeah, the analytics. If, on that, this if that viewership perfect. doesn't go from twelve to thirteen viewers, I'm like, I. I know yeah. like where that fell apart. It's very clean, <laughs> clean metrics. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, we love that. <laughs> okay. Well, probably the, the biggest Mario news. So there's quite a bit of news for the 35th anniversary is got to be the uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars package, which um, is happening in less than a week. So on September 18th, there's going to be a limited release where on the switch in one package, you can get Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario 64. Very good, in that order, as the Lord yes. ordained it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can get all three of them uh, starting this Friday, um, September 18th. You can pre-order them, and they'll be available until approximately the end of March 2021. <laughs> um, so pretty exciting. I know we're probably going to get into it. There's a notable uh, missing 3D Mario game that people would like to see be part of this package. But um, but I mm-hmm. Where is Mario and Sonic package. at the Olympic Games 2012? Or yeah. That's the one Mario. I was thinking <laughs> of. Beijing yes. Olympic, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. I want to see Amy Rose race Mario <laughs> on a horse. Well, you may uh, have Danny, let's just do quick quick thoughts, Danny. I want to see 100,000 toads play drums and intimidate the world. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see that. Just like as they are announcing like the... <laughs> the opening ceremony. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. I got to think they don't have like, and here comes the contestants from the Mushroom Kingdom. And it's like all these toads just Waving. flying in. Quick thought. What that are your me. thoughts on this limited release because that's the, really the elephant in the room for this package. You love it. Oh, I love I love uh, the things that are going to be released. I don't like the limited aspect of it. So that's my Definitely. in a nutshell take on it. Do you? <laughs> certainly. Do you have any thoughts? Does anyone have any thoughts as to why they're opting to do limited release? I have a theory. I'll let you guys go first. Well, so, okay. So the 25th anniversary, uh, the, they released the Mario collection on Wii, right? Right. And that was also limited edition. And, but the, you, you couldn't download that digitally. So th- there's like, this is, this is the weird part about this is where I, I complete, I, in a way I understand that this is kind of like the Disney vault esque, like mm-hmm. we're re- releasing this product. It's, you want to get your hands on it now. That made sense in the era of we, when you were clamoring for a, a hard copy of this thing, but why can why why limit the release on on the downloaded version? Like I don't understand like what, especially with no yeah 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 no no it makes no sense. I don't I don't understand yeah. that. So if it was you know ten years ago or whenever the Wii was out and that I mean yeah ten years ago right? And oh then, God, hello death. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it makes sense, but right right now I'm not really. I don't know. I don't, I'm not really following. Yeah. I mean, my working theory on this is the reason is just Nintendo, but I also think, (laughs) right. Yeah. I think, 
you know, with that collection, it was limited time and Super Mario All-Stars collection back on the Super Nintendo. You know, those were kind of bundles put together for the Super Mario All-Stars collection back in the day. It was kind of a novel idea to package up those things. And we don't see a lot of collections from Nintendo. Um, but with that, I feel like maybe it's just the, you know, the lineage, the history and tradition of like the limited time bundle. But yeah, you also wonder if they're doing it because they figure some element of, hey, like people are going to buy these things again and again if we put like, you know, on the on the Switch, if it gets a virtual console at some point that has N64 games, like is that going to be something that has Super Mario 64 again? Or are they planning on doing some type of more substantial remaster for any of these games? Because important to note, they're really just a port. How upset would all of you it's, be it's, if they decided like next summer like okay here's the like what danny you obviously pre-ordered the hard copy of this right you've yeah. been wanting sunshine oh, yeah. you've been wanting you've been wanting these games what, how could you be if they're like okay super mario sunshine you know like like hd is coming out you know spring of 2021 or summer of 2021 are do you though you go buy that game now for 60 bucks or are you like Fick a like yeah, so you and so Sun, Sunshine specifically, I think you and I talked about this before, Matt. I know like back in the day, development, all the stories come out of Sunshine. There was so much that was left on the cutting floor um, when editing. Pick a thing. If they did a full remaster next summer that also had like those extra levels that they just didn't have time to finish and like the story was fleshed out more, I guess that's one thing. If it's literally just a more graphically... Uh, a substantial different game, but otherwise everything else is the same as what we're getting this week. Yeah, I'd be. Pick up mm-hmm. I want to see those heinous cutscenes um, <laughs> updated, but I want them to make the oh, voices geez. even more off putting for all the characters. I want to see Mario do hard time in prison again. I'd love that. I want to explore that <laughs> time. So, so Game Explain did do a lot of those videos comparing comparing the two. Like, obviously, they've been up resed for, for Switch. Yeah. Um, including the cutscenes, um, but yeah. not to a point, you know, it's, it's, it's not. Yeah. It's what, all, it's all been up It has not been like uh, truly remade. And instance. even the widescreen aspect of this, did you see this for sunshine? They didn't really do anything different to make it widescreen, except they zoomed in a little more oh, no. and trimmed no. off a little off the top and off the bottom. That's like what Disney plus did, yeah. as you might recall with the Simpsons when they, when it released in Disney plus, which oh. is that like they put really? out all the yes. Simpsons episodes. Yes. I know what you're talking like, about, it's, yeah. it's 16 by 9, but just because they zoomed in. And so then, like, people were so up in arms, they went back and then put all those episodes back out in the true 4 by 3 format. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it just has letterboxing on the sides. That's crazy. I do hate that. You know, Nintendo has a history of putting sometimes these, like, weird ports, like, will find new life. So, for instance, on the 3DS, when Yoshi's Island was a game for the Ambassadors from the, the Game Boy Advance, it, like, it moved in. Each time we've seen that game, again since the original release of yoshi's island on the super nintendo it's been of their like weird port from the game boy advance version which did not have all of the like emulation correctly and then mm. uh, for, so it didn't have on the classically the touch fuzzy get dizzy level where you touch the pollen pieces and everything gets a little freaky um that like effect does not work properly and then as i understand it on the super nintendo classic version of that game it is still like the game boy advance emulation so it still is like lacking like these little audiovisual details because they kind of just like went with the port that I think was probably more easily on hand. And I wonder mm-hmm. if sunshine and that weird aspect <laughs> ratio might be like a sign of that. It's I just, do hate that though. I definitely hate that. I'm at a phase in my life right now where it has been challenging for me to find all the time that I want to play all of these games. Um, but, uh, but I've been, I've been wanting to replay these games forever and I actually never played galaxy at all. So um, I'm excited to be able There's- to jump into that one. Yeah, I brought up my older brother in the last podcast. Hello again, Nick. Uh, my little brother will hear this. Um, mm. But if they made it this far in, they get a prize. They get a prize. <laughs> yeah, my everlasting love as a brother. Um, I, you know, he was he was like he was pretty excited about about this announcement um, because I mean he played six four and my younger my middle my youngest brother, big Sunshine fan. He's excited about that. But they were both like, "How's Galaxy?" And I'm like, "Oh my god, Galaxy is it's definitely the amazing. best. Bunch. It's the best one." And and if anything, it makes this package to me quite worth it to be able to play Galaxy on, on the Switch and in handheld. The problem, though, of course, is is where's two? And if two, and if and if this is the only reason why Austin, I, I 
I feel like maybe you're onto something with this, like, okay, maybe there'll there'll be more re-releases. Is like, are they going to come out with, you know, two HD and sell that as a standalone? Like, how did dollars? They they certainly this whole 35th anniversary thing, right? They like they have the whole splash screen of like every logo, all these. Here's all the Mario games you can play on your Switch. Well, there is a glaring yeah. like one missing, which is Galaxy Two, and I don't understand how, like, like you, you know, it's just such a big game that that I don't really, I don't know, I don't, I don't know why they they wouldn't include it or if they're yeah, are they not no, 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 it's it totally funny. And so I'm looking here at a link to a Nintendo Life article, and basically what some user on Twitter Glim Glow had noticed is that in the 3D All Stars screen, uh, at one point there's Super Mario Galaxy Two music. Uh, that mm-hmm. does play through and so it's like a weird little nod to that game it doesn't mean anything but it's just it's funny because <laughs> even with this collection you can get enamel pins if you cl- complete these challenges on the nintendo website which is kind of fun but even like the representation of galaxy 2 specifically felt like very limited um and definitely these games are being highlighted yeah i do wonder and again the lack of a real remake for these games are they leaving the door open I th- if I had to guess, I would say it's just the tradition of the limited time, coupled with Nintendo having such a history of selling these games again and again on a virtual console platform. They're like, well, we don't p- want people to always be able to pay $60, which frankly is pretty steep for the collection of like pretty untouched games. At least it's three games, but like at the same time, um, you know, the collection like this kind of works only because it is so hard to get those games any other way. Like, unless you have, you know, it, there's unless you have a Wii, frankly, that's still in operation, can you access these games? And that's with a Super Mario Sunshine disc from the GameCube. So, like, the how how scarce these games are is kind of what makes it have decent value, which, frankly, is very dated and very Nintendo, and I think that's why they only continue yeah. to keep that scarcity up with a limited run of these things. Apparently, I, mean, I heard it's the second best-selling game of the year on Amazon. Yeah, right, any crossing. video game. Yeah which madness but but how much of that is because it's limited you know it's 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 a limited release i mean can you really can we really know i don't know but we can't know but i would guess decently i mean probably as much as you know that it released in a pandemic and everyone's looking for things to do at home Mm -hmm. and switch has really no other big game yeah and And the quick turnaround time like if you buy this immediately you get it in like two weeks is it Exactly. That's yeah. Draw. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of big needles. I think that broke that poor camel. <laughs> yeah. That's that. That is. The, that's the old uh, idiom. The needles that broke the gut. It's you know what? It's kind of funny yeah. because Nintendo recently released their like, you can take back a you can you can um, return cancel pre-order to cancel your pre-order right? But like I pre-ordered this and only because of the release date, only had like a few days to change my yeah. mind before they charged me. Um, <laughs> it's a weird like proof of concept. Yeah, it's like, okay, so you're going to give people about the chance, but like you're, it sounds like you're going to, like, are you just going to announce things like two weeks now before they come out and get right, all exactly, the hype yeah. money? You have up until a week to cancel, and it's like, this game comes out in 10 days. You're like, wait, <laughs> the, uh, Hey, that's better uh, than them announcing, you know, Pikmin a month ago for Oct- an October release. <laughs> well, and speaking of, another weird release would be Super Mario uh, 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, which I always want to think is Bowser's Furry. If, can we all get on the same? Yes, page that? I'm on. The, I was on the. I, I, that's how I read it in my mind that's when I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, it makes sense," but also yeah. weird. He's got like okay, a catsuit, you know, and he's a furry, and he's just curious. Yeah, he's he's got his thing. I'm not gonna judge. Right? No. Hey, no shame here. Hey, Cat Bowser all. is in this game, right? Like that is that's <laughs> that is a thing. And right, World. exactly. The precedent is definitely there. And who, he looks great. And who they're releasing it? new amiibo figures, Cat Mario and Cat yes. Peach, oh, to go yes, along with are. the game. So that just doubles down on your on your theory, I think. On my furry theory, yeah, yeah. I think this one's basically <laughs> an A&P lock. Let's take it to the bank. <laughs> Bowser's furry. Um, does but, it, okay, so the weird thing is this has not come out till February, I believe, 21st, 2020. We talked about last episode how vacant this fall is for Nintendo games. I'm very surprised this is not making it into the fall lineup. Like, do you think it's ready? I don't know why it wouldn't be. I mean, Which yeah, is to say, I mean, why? especially I mean, since this, this is already the... an HD port of an HD game. It's, it will have extra modes in the, in, you know, in the sense that there'll be the furry venture of Bowser where he kind of finds himself and confidence in a new I mean, lifestyle. <laughs> it seems like a lot of their model is that they're trying to have stuff going until March 
of 2021, like all of these different Mario things that are going on, they're all kind of going through March. And so maybe this is just an attempt to spread out the calendar a little bit as though it's I like a right. multi-month really event good. and not like this one day we did all this Mario stuff. But And po- yeah. potentially leading to another big event at the end of yeah. March. But maybe for a little another Switch pod, Pro. perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, that's actually a really good point. Not really something I thought about. We talked about that idea with Pikmin. Like, why is Pikmin in the middle of October? It's basically the same thing as this, which is, like, this is an HD game that'll have an extra mode. But so far, the extra modes that have come a part of these games has been, have been very minimal. So it's, you know, it's hard to imagine, especially given the assets and everything. It would take that long. So Pikmin yeah. being placed in the middle of October felt like, or middle of the fall holiday season, like something where they're just trying to, like, something to look forward to, something to space out the releases. Um, so they that's, can always say, that, well, there's something coming up for the spot Switch. On, yeah. I think we talked about last time that, you know, like next year is Zelda's 35th anniversary. Yep. That's what I was going to say. As a Zelda Oof. fan, that was the thing. Honestly, like, I'm like, cool, this is cool about Mario. But what does this say about what they're going to release when it's the Zelda anniversary? My first well, thought. It, it, yeah. it, 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 and, the, and let's not forget the Ice Climber anniversary is some at least some point in the next couple of years. Oh. That could be really big for Nana. <laughs> oh, and that's going to be huge. Considering both of them. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so this, let, we could bridge this conversation over because because one in terms of timeline, okay, so we have Pikmin in October. We've got a game we're going to talk about in a second, which is Hyrule Warriors, um, coming out in November, which twentieth. Their their what? big holiday this release. November, <laughs> and then they've got the Pokemon DLC, the the Tundra. Um, yep. At some point. Um, and then of course the, the 3d, the 3d collection is coming out next week. So, or this coming week. So that's what we've got for Nintendo. In addition to an unpaid major DLC, most likely for animal crossing. <laughs> and that's your, and that's your <laughs> holiday we're looking at. Um, yeah, that is not much. It's not much. And especially when you consider, you know, the next gen consoles coming out seemingly PlayStation as well, as we know now, November yeah. 22nd for Xbox. Like a lot of these games are will be fewer and fewer like cross-gen titles that'll mm-hmm. run on the, at least the current model of the switch and um yeah you gotta it's definitely quiet we know supply constraints have been so hard for the switch clearly there's like such a positive response for this 3d collection do you guys feel at all i feel like a little i on one hand i'm certainly glad this thing exists definitely so i want to come out front and say that and i'm excited to play it on friday Ooh, about however to drop the bomb. I feel like a little bummed that it like is selling so well only in that <laughs> I feel like it rewards this, like, you know, this strategy from Nintendo, <laughs> which is that like, there's nothing coming out, but now everyone's like, you know, we're hyped on this, which is good. But also I'm like, this is, these are three old games for $60 that largely have been available very, you know, Super Mario 64 on the virtual console back on the Wii and Wii U was like sub $10. You know, and so it's like, oof. I mean, it, it as far me as encouraging this behavior, this is coming yeah. from uh, someone who has for bought sure. how for many sure. versions of the DS? How many? Of course. <laughs> I'll buy another. We all know I got my my uh, Nintendo DS XL only last year. Uh, and I love it. <laughs> that champagne red color. It's beautiful. But at the same time, but I yeah. totally get that. Because I'm, I'm definitely guilty just of it. Guilty. I just like, wish. If this yeah. comes out, like Matt said earlier, if they do release a Super Mario 64 fully remastered art style and everything like a year from now, I'm going to be pissed while I'm giving them my money. Yeah. Right, for sure. Yeah. I feel like it's uh, a classic, like classic Nintendo thing. Their entire business model is based on like making things that are uh, just continuations of the same beloved characters and really like getting people to buy in on that nostalgia and buy in on the brand. And it's only recently that we've been living in this like amazing Nintendo time where there's a bajillion new games and like new concepts. And it's a great time to be a Nintendo fan. Um, So I don't find this surprising at all. And as one of those fans that it caters to, it's like, okay, yeah, I also only buy like a select few games that have to do with the same characters I've loved for the last 20 years. So. (laughs) Yeah. Right. It's just like consider when the Master Chief collection came out on Xbox, right? It's Ooh, in some times. ways it's similar. Like we had a, a full remaster of that point at Halo 2, included included the fairly recent at that point remaster of Halo 1. There was like new cutscenes, there was a robust multiplayer experience that bridged oh, yeah. a lot of the differences in those games. Like that was very cool. And also it was a six dollar game, and that was years ago. I just think uh I, I wish, I wish, I think we just got a little more out of this package. I think then I'd feel a little better about it. 
I think especially <sighs> coupled with the exclusivity, it feels yeah. like yeah. Well, there's okay, some so element of not not a full amount of confidence in there. So there's like this extra artificial. Like there's no there's no collectible coin in this package. No <laughs> but you know what you do like get so many coins. The you do get ones, an in-game ones. music player you mode. Get, you get this where you can play the music yep. even when the screen is off from your Nintendo Switch. It's not enough <laughs> yeah. for you. It's not enough Just for like you. in Smash, you okay. can take your music anywhere and so listen to all exactly. the music. Throw throw your iPod Mini in the trash because now yep. you have a Nintendo yeah. Switch, baby. <laughs> hey, if you get that Switch Lite, that easier, Ooh, much easier to it's carry. It's like the colors too. You can dance with those. <laughs> I just wish there was like a little something more. It does feel like man. I'm not surprised, but I wish there was a little something. Yeah. And if it weren't for the exclusivity part, I would think, oh, maybe Galaxy 2 will be like some sort of paid DLC for this thing down the road. But then they, again, just stomp on their own feet with. Yeah. yeah. So it's just hard because I don't know when it comes to collection, you you like I don't I don't want to buy these three and then have to buy galaxy on it as like a standalone you know like that should be in this whole in this whole thing and that's and that's that like sucks that like i don't know that you'd have to you, you have this this collection but it's like galaxy came out a year right after galaxy galaxy 2 came out a year after galaxy 1 so right so, and so so i've never like, played either galaxy if correct me if i'm wrong these are the probably the first two nintendo 3d games or mario 3d games that are like direct you know, sequel, right? So why? I guess it's even weirder to me to split them up. And the second one was even better than the first one. Technically, Super Mario World Two is Yoshi's Island, so uh, canonically <laughs> that is a sequel. But the yes, no, for sure, and it is weird. And it's weird to split up. Do you think? Okay, out of the three games in the package, and also Galaxy Two, which do you think is going to be first to get like a re-release? Well, that's like a legitimate remaster. I hesitate saying galaxy 2 only because since that one's further in nintendo's history the graphics aren't requiring a full remaster as for much sure, for sure i don't yeah, know, you know I mean, we got like twilight princess hd and that kind of thing and it's all the same gen yeah i've i mean my my hope would be their sunshine but i i i think like why not why not do it to galaxy 2 and then just release Galaxy 1 and 2 completely remastered together. How yeah. strange would that be? Or if it were like a Galaxy 2 and then it had the levels from Galaxy 1 that yeah, were in it's there? Good. Yeah, there's, the, Nintendo is absolutely going to do some bonkers thing like that where it's like, but you know, they're going to add all this extra stuff. Like who, who would have predicted Bowser's furry fury? Like <laughs> who would have who would have predicted that would have been like, we all just thought, okay, like this is a great Wii U game. That definitely needs to be on Switch, but none of us were like thinking Nintendo was going to add a bunch more levels. Sure, also, but in, none of us know what should, that is because, like, <laughs> most of the time they have like the yeah. you know New Super Mario Brothers. They had the Luigi DLC in there. Xenoblade had the 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 thing. Uh, Pikmin Three has the extra campaign. All the like, DLC, yeah. Funky but, Funky Mode. Who can forget <laughs> Funky Mode? Here's my here here are my mode. takes on on this scenario. I, I don't. Yes, we're rewarding Nintendo. But I don't think Nintendo wants to be in this situation. I think like they I think they they know they learned from their mistakes with the Wii U, which was just like drought after drought after drought. And that's why we got those first two years of Switch were amazing. And they understand that that's like good for their bottom line and that these bigger games are good for them. And they're just they're in this position right now, like many other companies where like they're just they just have to pivot. And they can fall back on the fact that they're Nintendo and people will still like they're like, uh, we've been in this situation before. We know we can just like lay breadcrumbs out for our fans and right. they're going to eat it up. And and so, yes, I think this is coming at a time where we're like, damn you, Nintendo. But yes, please give us more 3D Mario. You know, like we're, what do we think are the uh, what are we all in agreement is Pokemon Snap is not coming out this year. I said this last podcast. Okay, it looks that game looks done. I don't know why I wouldn't, yeah. but I assumed that it was until you just said that, and then I was reminded that it hasn't been announced. <laughs> it's mid September, uh, yeah. <laughs> but not impossible, as we're acknowledging. I, I think I think uh, could be a shadow could, drop, but yeah, yeah, there could be a Pokemon Direct that's like, hey, let's talk about the Tundra like DLC. Oh, and like Snap is like coming, like you know, in two weeks. I re- yeah i'm i'm just gonna say i do not think it's coming out this year i know it, like the trailer looked fine but also pokemon snap is like a super linear game you can blow through it in like probably three hours and i've done every single thing 
not a stays pat, but that type of thing would be, I feel like a hard sell for 60 bucks. Yeah. And so yeah. they're going to want some extra mode or gameplay or some light or remaster thing. the first one and you buy them both all at once <laughs> well, and that's that. 60 bucks but like the so there has to be some hook to it that's a little different versus like it's another on rails game and there's like eight levels like you know so with that in mind i think there's enough that they'd want to like talk about it and yeah. windows is getting so tight the end as the a sidebar i really hope they lean into everything they've learned with uh with um, Animal Crossing and like the shareability of of things and how you know like I I yeah. feel like they got to do some really fun creative stuff with the photos that you can take with Pokemon yeah uh, for sure. and just get that like viral Even, like, like stuff going fun filters and stuff because it yeah. is easier right now on the Switch to post to Twitter from your Switch and things and that's cool it would be fun to have yeah fun filters or stickers or things for Pokemon yep yeah so yeah okay let's let's all make our official prediction coming out this year yes or no I'm going no. I'm saying yes. For Snap, I'm going to say, say yes. no. Okay. Okay. Two, two no's and two yeses. Sounds, sounds like the no's Ooh. have it. <laughs> what do you guys think of the Mario Kart like AR uh, game? If I had RC a big enough game. space and the, the expendable money for it, because I imagine that's going to be expensive to have enough carts. It's, uh, like, it's 100 bucks a hundred bucks a thing at this point. So yeah, I, I would love to play it once. I, yeah. I don't see myself actually owning it. <laughs> I think I think it's an interesting look yeah. into like the kind of concepts they think of and like what what is the Mario Kart ride going to look at and like the Universal like theme park, you know, and mm -hmm. th it's it's one of those things where like if I was a kid, this thing would be so cool and I would definitely be on the top of my like. It's cool, but list. I still find it, I don't know, strange. How exciting can it possibly be? Like RC cars are fun on their face so that's one thing I guess. it's I awesome right. if you can throw like items and like stop the other car from like and you could build your own track it's a toy do you it's, foresee you're ever going to encounter in your life two kids with their switches in their and their like hundred dollar carts racing each other and hitting like in all honesty <laughs> do you think that's yeah. going to be something you ever witness no because yeah. the two that do do it and they're pros are going to have a killer youtube channel <laughs> and that's going to be like the extent that's of it, it. <laughs> I think that's a, that's I cool. think but that's the thing it's like I yeah. think it, the user the end user right is like going to come up with some really cool interesting tracks but this is not meant for us this is not meant for us this i know i know but it feels this even feels but, more to me like I mean, this is very labo-ish yeah but, but lab, like, labo is pretty expensive right so yeah. what do you think and that was cardboard <laughs> so, it was very cool mm, though i just want mm. to say that i did yeah build it with my younger brother who's only five years younger than me like we're both in our 20s but we had a great time building the, the cardboard nintendo thing and it was really fun was it worth the money no but it was cool it was cool. yeah it is it is cool labo kind of makes more sense to me as far as like a lego-ish project where this is kind of uh how i feel it's, it feels very very niche like it's going to be a very mm -hmm. like plus Here, you know this it's already sold out like by us you know man babies <laughs> on the internet who bought it so like the idea of two children getting it who genuinely want this thing well the weird thing is is you're focused on your screen and not the toys right. <laughs> so yeah so you're like you're like looking over here and then like dad's like what the f and steps on like mario and you're like, or yeah. like your, your cat or your dog him. walks in the so, way like how does the right. game take that into account i mean yeah the camera's there but it's like you're you're not even looking at the toy that like you're looking like you're not even looking at the thing you're looking at your screen so right, right. But this like is, I said, it still yeah. looks cool. It looks like the like little um um you know like the racetrack pieces they give you are like straight out of Labo like cardboard <laughs> setups at you. They may be. So since Labo's last last gasp was like inserting itself into like Odyssey and Breath of the Wild, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if this is like some like discarded idea that mm -hmm. has now found its own like marketing. Uh, going back to the Mario Kart thing, I'm looking at a screenshot. There's like a gas tank icon next to like the Wi-Fi icon on like your screen. So just like the RC cars running out of batteries. Like, like yeah, I don't know. No, they're running on petroleum. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. Sweet. <laughs> but it is cool to be seeing your living room or whatever from a whole new perspective. Um, yeah, it's very honey. I shrunk the kids. And <laughs> it definitely them. is. <laughs> yes. Yes. Rick Moranis, thanks for stepping back into the into yeah, the Yeah, thank you, Ryan Reynolds, for your service. <laughs> bring, bring my boy Rick out. I think you are now ready. Ready to hear what happened 100 years ago. We got a little Zelda news. 
Danny, can you hit me with the release date and a little synopsis of what we're looking at here? Breath of the Wild 2 coming out this year. Let's hear it. Just like how Nintendo hit us this week with a surprise drop. Was that Tuesday? Was that Wednesday? Monday, Slatterday, whatever. Yeah, (laughs) it all just blends together. So Nintendo, just let us know. um, First, uh, Anuma, uh, famous of the Zelda development team, uh, showed up to let us know that, yes, they're hard at work on all things Zelda. Um, of course, everyone's heart started racing to hear what he had to say of the surprise. Mm-hmm. And his, the next words out of his mouth were, we are working hard on Breath of the Wild 2. We need a little bit more time for that. That's my heads up on that. <laughs> uh, but to tide you over, um, how about this prequel game? Think uh, Rogue One or Halo Reach. Um, this mm-hmm. is Hyrule Warriors uh, Calamity. Age of Calamity, excuse me. Mm-hmm. And it'll be launching on November 20th. So the next spot in um, Nintendo and is it Koi Tecmo games um, in their mm-hmm. history? Um, so, yeah, Koi Tecmo back in it. They also did Hyrule Warriors, uh, you know, as well as the Definitive Edition um, that came out when the Switch first launched. Um, but, yeah, this is a prequel set 100 years before the events of the first Breath of the Wild. Pretty much. Uh, Sounds like it's going to be the fall of Hyrule to Calamity. Um, you can mm-hmm. see all the images in the screenshots and stuff on the website um, on Nintendo and on the trailer, too. Um, you see the castle that was in ruins and Breath of the Wild is now in its glory and its heyday. Um, you see the warriors uh, all over, the four champions still alive, fighting all the big goons. Um, so, yeah, this is, our, this is our upcoming prequel Zelda game yeah. out of nowhere. Definitely so out of nowhere. So here we are. Um, did any of you play Hyrule Warriors? I did. Nope. Okay, I played all the way through it because I felt this commitment to be like, I'm going to beat every Zelda game. It was part of the mission mm-hmm. at the time. Mm-hmm. So I did play this game, but I, I honestly like hate played through it. Back on the Wii U, and it was one of those games where it was just every level, I was just like, oh man, like I need to finish <laughs> this game. I want it so badly to be over. And each each prolonged mission was a... Uh, another another punch to the gut as far as trying to like just finish that game so i get onto Link's crossbow training and check that one finish off the, the list fight too. but mm-hmm. the, the uh koei tecmo also made fire emblem warriors uh yep. which came out on the switch mm-hmm. or really in the switch's uh, life cycle and i actually found myself really liking that game generally and was surprised so both of these are you know very hack and slash games where you're taking on many hundreds of enemies at a time and it's they're very easy it's really just about the spectacle more than it is Mm -hmm. anything else but fire emblem warriors had some fun things going on where you had multiple characters on the screen at a time you could jump between them and it incorporated not only the characters and sound effects and imagery from the fire emblem series including like the little tones for leveling up that were the same from the 3ds games and nice little nods like that but also, you had like some area management in the same way, like kind of Fire Emblem. So you'd send units to one area to take over one area. So it had this cool crossover that was just enough to make me actually really enjoy that game relative to Hyrule Warriors, which had a couple things working against him. I'm going to hit you with. One, the art Ooh. style was pretty scattershot in Ugh. that the yeah, different the types one, yeah. of characters for the first one, yeah, were like, you know, Link had this cool design with the scarf that was from the Hyrule Historia, and that was like neat. But then there were certain characters that looked like they'd been pulled out of like, oh, this is what, you know, this the, the game they came for era looked like versus like this Link looked more Skyward Sword. Isn't this where Linkle came from? Linkle eventually came out for the 3DS version, um, you, which was you, like on one hand, it was like, this is exciting. A female Link, because everyone always wants a female protagonist for these series. But then it's like, instead, it was this very dopey, like Linkle, who was like just a goof. I never played the 3DS version, so I can't speak to it too much. But it was not like the awesome female link that we'd have always wanted and said it was like kind of a goofy which felt like kind of an out of touch decision even though you can play characters like zelda uh in these games which is neat and they all have like really there there were a lot of cool like references to uh different characters throughout the franchise midna you know playing as midna and the, and the wolf things that didn't make sense timeline wise but it was just like those things were fun but the other thing i did not care for in the character design part of it was like a lot of the characters that were original to the game were like just so thirsty like just characters that were like really like the designs was there they just felt like not done with like the nintendo like charm or anything instead it was 
it you know felt more like Link and people were guest starring in something versus like an actual like a Zelda weird greatest hits thing, thing or something. So that said, this game I do think corrects a couple of those errors. The art design looks very consistent with Breath of the Wild, so much so that I felt like at the start of the trailer, even though we knew it was the hack and slash Musou style game, like the at first I was like, is this footage? Is are some of these clips? From Breath of the Wild one, like oh yeah, you're like are uh, these the yeah, dreams? The same reaction. Yeah. yeah, I was like, are, yeah. are these like story moments that I forgot? And then as when I was like, oh no, these are original and they look, they look great. They look like the game. They and it, it looks amazing. Uh, at least it it looks like they paid extra special attention to the detail of getting the aesthetic of Breath of the Wild right. If they mm-hmm. were gonna yeah hand yeah. over the keys to that Ferrari and. It's nice to see Nintendo continue to give, you know, yeah, a big IP, franchise yeah, like Zelda it. to, yeah, to, to trusted third parties like this. And yeah, we text, we were texting as this got, you know, announced and we were kind of like, this is, if anything, a very cool way to get the like backs, the backstory in the history, yes. which you can get in the game through like little scrolls Most and diaries yeah. and like different things. Info will give you some information. but. Yeah. Like, the things that games excel at are the spectacle. Really cool combos that often incorporate, like, whoa, it's cool. It's, like, maybe Sheik, and Sheik's on the harp, and you're like, this makes, like, sense, and it summons into something cool. Like, that is awesome. And um, I do think for this, like, that was the one thing in Breath of the Wild that I, I warmed to, but I missed having, especially because I really liked Skyward Sword. Dare I say, loved Skyward Sword. And I really got a lot out of the story elements. Like that was very exciting as like a long time Zelda person to see the way they handled that game. And then breath of the wild, obviously it's not as much uh, story is happening in an obvious way. And so I'm actually really excited to see cut scenes with like, I never really got a good sense for like Rivaldi, for example, like, you know, yeah. like, yeah, sure. I know he's a member of Star Fox team and like, <laughs> I know he's got a bad attitude and whatever, but like the, I don't know much about him. And so this would be kind of fun to see so more true. of that. And that actually is exciting to me. I, I feel mm-hmm. like that'll give me something to pull me through the story, which is what that first game was really lacking. The story just felt very cheese ball. And for this one, they're like, we want you to make the game, but we're going to be right by your side the whole time. Yeah. Um, I bet there's like a very specific story they want to tell. And again, back to my seeing the cutscene the first time and wondering if they were breath of the wild cutscenes. Like it feels like the tone mm-hmm. and emphasis Mm-hmm. seems appropriate and also danny like you mentioned with rogue one this it is fun to have the story as halo reach rogue one place where you know it's not there is no rogue one i don't know anymore I, I don't know what movie you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> oh mm. no well, <laughs> we, we are now transitioning to our star wars <laughs> podcast <laughs> i like the idea of ending with like a kind of a glum slightly hopeful ending is yeah no, no zelda games really take that and yeah it, Except for I'm, kind of, well, there's one of them. We're not going to worry about it. Oh, yeah, where you going, Jordan? Oh, no, I, I'm but. just, I'm of two minds of whether or not to buy this because I just really want the story and I think the game, like, visually looks really great and consistent with Breath of the Wild and obviously I love everything about Breath of the Wild, but the thing that I love about Zelda is mostly the puzzles. Like, I, I'm not there for, I've, I don't, I don't like yeah. boss fights so much that I have, like, almost not be i actually never beat breath of the wild because i just didn't care to go and play the final boss um yeah, there are several the games where too. i get to the final boss and then i'm like eh, it's i i got all this i got everything i needed to get out of this game so <laughs> yeah. the idea of a game that's just like all about the battles i understand that's appealing to some people but it's kind of the stuff that i i am least interested in so i'm like oh do i do that or and do the I battles just... are definitely worse and like it's just yeah. like you slash and hundreds yeah of and i thought the like combat a... in in breath of the wild was so great and right because you could make it into a puzzle if you wanted to make it into a puzzle you could be really yeah. strategic you could literally bash people with the puzzle pieces yes, <laughs> exactly <laughs> but and i mean you'll notice like it there's doesn't say zelda anywhere in the title you know it's just hyrule warriors age of calamity there's this whole new logo but then it's like the image that you see is basically the art from breath of the wild right. like yeah. yeah and it and no the art's on point that's definitely the strength of this just draws you back in yeah and that, i mean that's that's here's the other thing is why now why not during the 35th anniversary of zelda why? Why because not that, replace they're, this they're with 3D World? They're hopefully saving to 
to uh, give us all of the ports that we want on the Switch. <laughs> I think Breath of the Wild 2 will come out next year, and that'll be the same year. So they don't want to give us both this and that in the same. Yeah. I think they, they like, do. You know. Just oh, like, no, as you say, they do yeah. try to do one Zelda game a year since the Switch came out, right? I mean. Yeah. So basically. Uh, I mean, 17, we had Breath of the Wild. 18, we probably had nothing. 19, we had Link's Awakening. 20, we had Or every other year, maybe? Yeah. Well, all of them but 2018. Well, we but had the, we had okay. Cadence of Hyrule. Oh, that was that's true was that but that was but does it help flesh out the fall that we are all just previously talking about being kind of paltry is yeah. that the fall just demands it and we know from that leaked thing the warrior 64 pointed out that there was going to be super mario maker 2 challenges for 35th anniversary like back in april so it never happened so clearly all this got pushed likely due to covid and i think they're mm-hmm. just you know at this point putting things into the fall maybe at one point in one different timeline, they had anticipated something big coming out, but now they didn't. And Animal Crossing sold well, so they decided just to sit on these things and announce them so close to release date. But yeah, and maybe like 3D All Stars and this game, uh, Hyrule Warriors, maybe they plan to announce these at E3 before everything kind of mm-hmm. hit the fan. You know, maybe this was stuff they, yeah, they had a bigger. Uh, Kind of like Microsoft had a whole press event planned for the Xbox One S and then just, oh, I guess we're announcing it today. <laughs> right. Yeah. Middle of the night on yeah. Twitter. But that the world cool. just kind of takes turns like that. My, my, I ultimately wanted to say that I think Nintendo, like, is actually in a pretty good spot, like, this holiday season. As bleak as it sounds, like, you know, they're not, they were never trying to compete directly uh, with the other two consoles. And I know, like, they've traditionally, have released had some kind of big release but i think in this this very different year they just they just don't need one there's like they're projecting a big holiday sales push like they've we that news came out about like you know ramping up their production of switch by x x percent because they really think they're going to sell a ton more than they typically have during the holiday season and it's not because of any major games coming out then which is nuts um but they're they're like they have this great 3D, you know, Mario collection on top of a, like if you just look at their main page of their website, there's a ton of of great first party content that like people haven't had a chance to play yet. They might pick up a light or they'll get a full switch for the holiday and they've got plenty to play on there and they're going to be totally fine even though it's such a it's such a big, you know, drought especially during their their biggest game release time of the year. Um which is nuts, but it's also it's also telling. And then I think yeah. they parlay that into a bigger release with a like of a Breath of the Wild with a hopeful hopefully a, a better Switch model in 2021. Well yeah. after the other consoles have launched. <laughs> and with that, that's the end of another Nintendo podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this has been Austin Cummings with Jordan Weiner. Bye guys. And Danny Tortelli. Au revoir. And that's all. And thank and you so it. much. <laughs> <laughs> so long. Very good. Uh, until next time, uh, you know, stay safe. And, you know, be good to one another. Maybe. Please. <laughs> vote. <laughs> yes. Yes. Definitely. Please, please vote. Absolutely. That makes the Definitely cut. vote. Get World of Tanks. <laughs> <laughs> and also download World of Tanks. Ha, ha, ha.